Okay, well, we're still on the lake here. You might as well just do another couple reviews here while I think about it. So we were talking about trolling motors earlier. If you're gonna use a trolling motor, all the power to you. If you don't wanna carry that battery or if you're just gonna be portaging or going from quick little stint to stint, you're gonna need a paddle. So what you can do is you can go to Canadian Tire, get a paddle. You can get the beaver tail paddles. There's a couple other different kind of tails. Now, the biggest difference is I know paddles can go up crazy money if you get into kayaking for canoeing. You pretty much got your basic paddles and then you got your little bit fancier paddles that might be wrapped with some fiberglass or protected a little better. So what I'm going to recommend to you is depending on how much paddling you're going to do, these are definitely going to work, but these are going to be better for your shoulders. They're a little lighter, a lot smoother, a little more ergonomic. Per stroke, you're going to push your canoe a little further with those than one of these. They're going to fit your hand a little better. This paddle I literally bought last year, stored inside all the time, and it's already starting to get decay and stuff on the clear coat. And I know you can just clear coat that again. But this one I've had a lot longer. Um, there is no, nothing wrong with this end here. This end here just from getting beaten around it's got rub marks but there's nothing wrong with any of the clear coat or anything like that i can definitely clear coat that when i clear coat this one but this one was maybe on sale 15 dollars cheaper than this one so bang for your buck wise every day i would go for one of those ones different brands feel them out yourself watch another youtube video i might get into it but i haven't done it yet on the length of your paddle Pretty much if you're sitting in a boat, you can measure the length that you're going to need when you're stroking in, into the water. But bang for buck, I would get one of these. The only thing I recommend is if you're going to get two paddles, if you're normally going with two people all the time, you should get two paddles, obviously. I would recommend getting one of these and one of these or two of these and one of those cheap little telescopic kind of collapsible paddles. The reason being for that, depending on where you are, most of these lakes that I go around here, these trout lakes, they're all sandy bottoms, so they're not gonna wreck your paddle at all. So you can push off with this. I've pushed off with this many times. You don't even see any marks at all. This is an older paddle, used it a lot more. I don't push off with it, so you can still see it's looking brand new. If it's a rocky bottom, guys, I would not push off with this paddle because you're gonna start chipping it and it's gonna start to wear and not good. If you have a cheaper paddle or even one of those cheap telescopic plastic paddles, even better, you can push around and then when you get into shore, you can kind of steer yourselves with one of those. Or if you're just pushing off, you got a nice oar, flip it over. This is a beautiful thing to hold in your hand. Push off with that, not a problem there. It'll definitely save you a lot of money in the long run and it'll save you a couple paddles. Another quick thing we were talking about is one of these things so if you have a cup of water beer whatever you're fishing with it's going to get hot that thing's literally a solarium so if you have one of these things you just throw that over top it's literally going to save your drink hours of coolness because that is one of the biggest things i've noticed every time you look at your drink it's all perspiring it's because it's literally a magnifying glass I don't care how good of an insulated cup that is, if it's got a plastic top that's clear, it is gonna be literally a magnifying glass. It's gonna heat it up instantly, so make sure you cover that up. That works really good for that. Another thing, wireless headphones. If you're gonna go fishing out on a lake with a whole bunch of people, a lot of screaming, a lot of birds. I know this lake has so many birds, it is actually honestly quite annoying. I love nature, but that is just too much and it's mostly seagulls which are just an annoying bird so these are great you can get away from all the noise of all the pests and stuff like that but another thing too is whatever everybody has their different style of music everybody's coming out on their boats now with their bluetooth speakers and these big little ghetto blaster things it's getting annoying hearing music all across the lake and then everybody's trying to overpower each other get these music sounds amazing and uh, you won't have to hear all that other riffraff. And one more thing, I'm just gonna move these paddles out of my way. Rods. Now rods, they may look beautiful in the store, but once you get them out in real life, they are definitely a 
thing of beauty. Some of these rods have such nice glossy finishes, metallic finishes nowadays. And you can get some cheap rods and they have the same thing, which is really nice to see. One thing I wish that more rods would do is sage all the power to you. You have the best rods in my mind for one reason. They are all hand serial numbered. A lot of these other rod companies say that they make these rods by hand. Everything's handmade. It's not made overseas. Just serial number your rods. It just makes you feel like you've got that little bit extra when you spend the same amount of money. So in my mind, if you have a hand serial numbered rod, it doesn't cost the company any more and it's just that little added touch that just makes it, your money go that extra a little bit further. One more thing before we go here is if I could find my fly in this wind here. Yeah, here it is. So for everybody that gets their leader knot stuck in the tip or the tip of their rod here, this is one easy way to do it. And if you have an Orvis rod, a lot of Orvis rods don't have any fly holder here. So you can hook it on the back of your fly reel. I don't recommend that, it's kind of a pain in the butt. This is what I've got taught years ago, it still works well. So you go up to your first eyelet here, hook it on there, and then you bring your line back, wrap it on the outside around your reel, and then on your fly line. Reel it in that little bit just to take up that tension. One thing is, next time you go to use it, you've already pulled out a little bit of rod reel, line, everything's good. You take that and you start stripping it out, you're ready to go. And the biggest thing, I'm not going to be able to get this into, oh maybe I will. Your leader's still up here about a good 5-6 inches from your rod tip. It's not in the guides. So you can just start stripping line and start casting if you see a fish rise up right beside you or something like that. So that works well and that's definitely a helpful tip. Back to fishing, we'll talk to you in a bit. One more thing here, these Orvis Clearwater rods, beautiful rods. If you guys are just getting into fly fishing, don't want to start out with a starter starter rod, you want to get something a little more of a rod that you're going to be able to keep for quite a few years or a lifetime, honestly these things are great, 25 year warranty and uh, they're great for people that don't know how to cast or just getting into it. They're a little bit of a stiffer rod but they still have that flexible tip that uh, everybody else is looking for. Uh, great rod, honestly. One of the best rods that, uh, especially if it's your first couple times into uh, the year, you're going to be a little green. These rods here, honestly, they perform easy to cast. Really, really easy to cast. They don't look the greatest, you know. they got a lot of filler in their cork handles here, but uh, kind of a plain, I think it's aluminum here. It's definitely a metal. It's got to be aluminum reel seat, uh, single nut, but who cares? Most of the reels or rod seats have that for the reels. Um, yeah, great quality rod though. Definitely uh, gonna get us, out of, get us out of trouble here with the motor quickly. Yeah, definitely a good quality rod and uh, that's saying quite a bit. I have some pretty good rods here. I got that Orvis Helios 3D. I love this rod, but if uh, you don't wanna spend a lot of money on a rod, guys, this is definitely a, a beautiful rod. Thing comes in under under 300 bucks at Cabela's, Fish and Hole, all those places you're gonna find them. They go on sale, obviously, 25 year warranty. They don't have hook loops, so you can't have a hook there, but like I said, you can definitely hook it there, wrap it around your reel, easy to do it. And we're gonna get back to the fishing here. Sun's coming out again, it's uh, beautiful. We had the one cloud in the sky. Of course, it had to go over the sun, but that's spring, back to her. All right, what a beautiful day to be out on the water here. This is the first day I've been on the water here. Caught a couple little tiny fish. I didn't even bother recording them because they are, uh, well, they're obviously from last year. I don't know how, but uh, like 10, 11 inches maybe. Maybe pushing 12. I didn't bring a tape measure with me. Um, Yeah, there's supposed to be some really big fish in here. Hopefully we'll hook onto one of those here soon. Just wanted to uh, give a couple things. That's made no sense. 